Good morning. This is your wake up call. Wake up call 012. Forget not. Wake up call 012. Forget not. Hey, first things first, I want to give a shout out to my friend Sydney. Thank you for listening to the podcast. You're awesome. You know who you are. Hey, I want to take you to Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. Let me read this to you. It says, My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. I want want us to walk through those four verses in the book of Proverbs chapter 3. The first thing that the Bible is commanding us is, don't forget my law. Think about that. Uh, You know, we are new creations in Christ Jesus. When you receive Christ, your spirit's made brand new. But we still have a soul where our will, our imaginations, our thought life, our emotions live. Right? We are a spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a body. This body has to be crucified and bring under the subjection to the word of and word and will of God. Our soul, where our thoughts and our imaginations and our emotions live, that has to bring under be brought under subjection to the Lordship of Christ and His Word. And the Bible's showing us right here, it's making a command. Do not forget my law. And he says it lovingly, my son. Uh, as a father is teaching a son, do not forget my law. Do not allow my law to slip from your memory. And then the next thing, but let your heart keep my commands. Right there we see two things that are taking place. Don't forget my law. Let your heart keep my commands. So there's a connection there between your thoughts and your heart. Now, obviously, when the Bible talks about heart, it doesn't, it's not referring to that pump valve that's in your chest that pumps blood through your body and keeps you living. But you can imagine just as the heart physically is, we'll say, in the center of your body, within you, and if that heart gives you problems, It's going to give the rest of your body problems, right? If your heart's not functioning properly, it will mess up so many other systems in your body. It will make so many other things out of whack if your heart is having a hard time, right? And if your heart quits beating, you'll die. Well, it's no different than the heart of man or the spirit of man within you. Within you, your spirit is where you really are right? You are much more than what you see in the mirror. You are much more than what you think. You are a spirit. The Bible tells us that God is a spirit and we must worship him in spirit and in truth. 1 Corinthians 2 tells us that it is the spirit of man that discerns or knows the things of the spirit, just like the mind and the body understands natural things. You are a spirit. We're made in the image of God. And within you, you have that, that is the place of submission. That's the place of surrender. You surrender your spirit. You surrender who you are to Christ Jesus and to His Word. And you do not allow your mind to forget His law. So there's a connection there. What you're meditating on, don't forget my law, and let your heart keep my commandments. You do not... The power to obey the Word of God begins with you meditating and thinking on and pondering the Word of God. You need to get God's Word in you. How are you going to do that? Through your eyes, through your ears, through reading, through study, through listening, through teaching, uh, being part of church, being part of Bible study, listening to this wake-up call. When you're getting the Word of God coming into you, it gives you an opportunity to think about what the Word says, what God is saying to you, and then it allows your heart to keep His commands. Now, what's so powerful about that is among many benefits, right? David said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits in Psalms 103. There are so many benefits to serving God. There are so many wonderful blessings 
that the Lord brings to you when you set your heart and mind and soul and entire life to serve Him. And we can see here some of the benefits are listed here. Verse 2, when you do not forget the Word and you let your heart keep the commands of God, you will have length of days and long life and peace will be added to you. So think about that. You want peace? Keep the Word. You want peace in your heart and your mind? If you're obeying the Word of God, if you're committed to the things of God, if you're honoring God and yielding yourself to His truth, to His Word, to His commands, you're not going to have to be concerned about someone catching you doing something wrong, right? Because you're not going to be doing those wrong things. You won't have to make up a lie to cover the last lie. No, you live in truth. Right? That's the wonderful thing about when you just tell the truth. You don't have to remember what you said. Right? If you, if you make a lie, if you tell a lie, you have to remember the next day, what was that lie I told so I don't get caught in my lie? When you tell the truth, it's easy. You just say it, say it as it is. Well, when you keep the Word of God and you yield to the Word of God, it's going to give you peace. You know, the Bible says in Isaiah 26, in fact, let me, let me show you that. Let me read this to you. Isaiah 26, this is a great great promise in Scripture. I, I mean, I pray this almost every day uh, during my time of prayer. Isaiah 26, 3, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. And I always add this one, trust in the Lord forever. For in Jehovah, the Lord is everlasting strength. So who is kept in perfect peace? Who stays in perfect peace? The person who keeps their mind on the things of God. How do I show God that I trust Him? By keeping my thoughts on Him and His Word. And not just peace. You'll receive length of days and long life. You'll have a full life. Now look, just think about this practically. The Bible, God's Word tells you how to live righteously, how to live holy. There are consequences to sin, obviously. Spiritually, we understand that. But do you realize there's natural consequences to sin? You know, there's many reasons why God doesn't want you, I don't know, let's take addiction. God doesn't want you addicted to something because He wants to be Lord of your life. He doesn't want you addicted to substance, substance abuse or drugs or alcohol, pornography. He doesn't want you addicted to things. Because addiction is something lording itself over you. You doing things you don't even want to do, but you've, you've enslaved yourself to it. Now think about it. If you submit yourself to Christ and He frees you from those things, you, you've got to make a choice never to go back to those things and allow it to be a lord of your life. But there's a spiritual <clears throat> cost there, obviously. But there's also a natural cost, just practically. You learn it in school and you're, when your dare officers shows you all those scary statistics of, of people that do this drugs use or abuse alcohol or abuse these or over-the-counter drugs. There's a natural consequence to it as well, right? So plainly, when you submit yourself to the Word of God, when you refuse to be forgetful about God's Word, but remember His Word and let your heart keep it, allow the Holy Spirit to empower you to obey the Word, you're going to have a long life. Just naturally, you're going to, you're going to have a long life. You can look at this uh, with, with money, you know, something I say as a pastor. There's three areas that we, uh, as a pastor, always are hitting on. Relationships, money, and health. Because that's those three areas that we get prayer requests the most for. Relationships, money, and health. You know, healing in the body. But will you think about it with money, with finances, if you'll just do what the Bible says concerning money, you, you'll, you'll be top 1% in the world. Because the Bible, we're here in the book of Proverbs, you read through the book of Proverbs and apply it to your finances, you're going to tithe, you're going to give, you're going to save, invest, you're going to budget, you're going to give to those that are in need, you're going to bless people, you're going to buy uh, income-producing assets. Now think about that. When you just obey the Word of God, it's going to bring a blessing to your life. We're just talking about practical things. You can see even people that don't believe in God, they will find 
promise, not I shouldn't say promises, they'll find principles from the Word of God and not even know it. You look at, you see this all the time in business principles. You go to a business seminar or success seminar and they're teaching biblical principles and they don't even know it. Now, not everything they're teaching is, but some of them are. And amazingly love, hey, it works because it's a law. It's like gravity. If I, if I let go of this pen, it's going to fall every time. Whether I know it's gravity, whether I understand gravity, whether I believe in gravity, if I let go, it drops. It's just that simple. And when you commit yourself to the things of God, there is a blessing attached to it. And one of those, some of those blessings are listed here. Length of days, long life, and peace. Now notice this. We just went from, don't forget, there's the mind, let your heart, there's the inward witness, the inward part of your life, Verse 3, it says this, Let not mercy, or loving kindness, grace, and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck and write them on the tablet of your heart. So again, we have an inward-outward working here. Don't allow mercy or truth to escape you. Be merciful. Be gracious. Have the love of God abounding in your heart. And don't allow truth, the truth of God, to slip away from you. Submit yourself to the truth of God. And then it says, bind it around your neck. So that's outward, like you're wearing a necklace. That's outward. Outwardly, I'm going to allow the grace and mercy and loving kindness of God to feel all my actions, to, to anoint all my actions. And the truth of God's going to direct what I do. My actions are going to be directed by the truth of God. Bind it around your neck, outward. Write them on the tablet of your heart, inward. My thought life, my relationship toward God, what I'm dwelling on, what my heart wants to do, the desires of my heart are going to be bound up by God's mercy and God's truth. And if I do that, again, it's... If, if, we're, if we keep the law, we keep the Word of God before our minds, in our hearts, life, peace. Now it's giving us another command. Don't allow mercy or truth to escape your outward working or your inward working. So that, verse 4, you can find favor and high esteem or good understanding in the sight of God and man. By allowing God's mercy, God's grace, His loving kindness, His goodness to flow and live in you, and permeate, seep through, work through your actions and your inward, wit your inward heart and His truth to guide what you think and say and do, when you yield to His mercy and His truth, you're going to find favor and high esteem, favor and understanding with God and man. That's a win-win there, isn't it? The following, obeying God's word will put you in the, in the perfect will of God. And that's where you want to be. You want to be in the perfect will of God. It's that simple. You know, people ask, how do I know I'm in the will of God? The first step to the will of God is knowing his word. Second step, obeying it. And then there's very, I'm going to say that will cover 90% of your life. And then for the specific, specifics of your life. Where should I work? Who should I marry? What church should I go to? Where should I live? What should I do here or there? Those things, God will, will lead you and guide you. He'll give you principles in His Word. Obviously, you know, like, all right, marriage, let's take that. Who should I marry? Well, the Bible point blank says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. A lot of you listening, you're looking, you're, you're dating, you're looking for that spouse, that husband, that wife. First rule, they've got to believe and confess Jesus as their Lord. They've got to love Jesus. If they don't love Jesus, uh, they're, not, they're not marriage material. And the, let me tell you something, we're not going to evangelistically date people into the kingdom. There is no such thing as missionary dating. <laughs> we're not going to kiss people into the kingdom. It don't work that way. You can't change people. They have to want to change. We'll pray for them. You'll witness to them. Hey, absolutely. But we're not going to uh, date them into the kingdom. It, it won't work. It all, I've always, anytime I've ever seen that, it always ends in heartbreak and it doesn't work out. Okay, but the Bible says point blank. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. So first rule, if they're not a believer, they're not marriage material. But you may have... 
you know, I know the people that are listening to this podcast, obviously, that are single, you've just got a whole slew of people chasing after you, right? You know, you're, if you're a lady, you're looking for a husband, you just got men everywhere attacking you, right? No, well, I shouldn't say attack. I mean it in a good way. <laughs> if they're attacking you, okay, you, you need to, you know, spray them with some mace, get your concealed weapons permit. <laughs> what, what I meant by that was you've got suitors that see what a wonderful woman you are, and they would love to have your hand in marriage. And let's say they're all godly men. Okay, now how do I know who to pick? That's when you're going to seek the Lord in prayer, and the Holy Spirit's going to lead you to the right person. Because I believe if you'll submit to the will of God, He'll lead you to the right person so that you can have a lifelong marriage. You know, that's just one example. Uh, where should I work? You know, well, first off, what does God call you to do? Because we see that in the Bible. Give your gifts and talents to the Lord. Make it produce for Him. Well, what does that look like? That means everything I'm doing, I'm doing it unto the glory of God and the best way I can do it with excellence. Colossians 3, everything I'm going to do, I'm going to do it unto the glory of God. And then, okay, what company should I work with or should I start my own business? That's where the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you in times of prayer. But it is on the basis of of his word. If you'll get the word hidden in your heart, it will pretty much, you know, 90, 95% answer all your questions. And for the few questions that are specific to who you are and where you are in life, the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you. So remember this, do not forget the word. Keep it in your mind. Keep it in your heart. Experience the benefits of God's supernatural word, peace, long life, let mercy and truth dictate everything you do, outwardly, inwardly, so that you can have favor and high esteem with God and man. Hey, I'm so thankful that you joined me on this wake-up call. I hope you have a wonderful day. And remember, this Thursday, brand new podcast episode. If you haven't if you didn't uh, catch the last Thursday episode, I had an interview with Pastor Cade Young, author of Jesus Ain't Woke. Hey, if you missed that episode, you need to go back and listen to it. If this is the first time you're listening to me, uh, if you're watching on video, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Instagram, hit the link tree. It'll take you to the podcast. Facebook, look down in the dis or up in the description on Facebook, and there'll be links to the podcast channel. Go over to the podcast channel, Spotify, Apple, Anchor, subscribe. That way you don't miss any of the future episodes. I've got a new one coming out Thursday. Of course, every Thursday is a teaching episode. And uh, you don't want to miss these Monday wake-up calls either, obviously. But if you haven't heard that last episode of Pastor Cade Young, I don't know why I'm doing this as if it's the episode is physically over there. It's not. It's in the interwebs. <laughs> but go listen to that episode. You'll enjoy it. It'll be a blessing to you. I, hey, I'm so thankful that you joined me today. And remember, we are the faithful. See you next time.